greetings, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day 17 of my 2023 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be making a card using the brand new Lawn Fawn Porcupine For You stamp set and I'll be mixing it with images from Joy to All and Merry Mice with a sentiment from Merry Messages to turn it into a Christmas card. So I've stamped my images with Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink on Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White Cardstock, and I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with these adorable new porcupines, and I'll color their bodies with E51, E53, and E55. I like to color darkest to lightest, so I'm starting with the E55 and laying in my shadows wherever I think they should go. I like to keep the face nice and light, so I typically put my shadows on the back of the body. So for the first porcupine that is facing toward the right, his shadows are going to fall on the left hand side. And then for the other porcupine and the baby, they're both facing toward the left, so their shadows are going to fall on the right hand side. So I started with the E55 and then I blended that all out with the E53 for my midtone, and that's going to leave a nice light area with that E51 for the face and the belly on all of those guys, which I think makes them look really super cute. I am just in love with these little guys. This is a brand new critter for Lawn Fawn. They do have some hedgehogs. There's the little mini set that I think is called Hedgehogs for You or something like that. And then there's also a hedgehog in Jump for Joy. But uh, these porcupines are a little bit different. I like how spiky their backs are. I think that's super fun. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to have a new Lawn Fawn critter to color. So I'm working on their spikes now, or I guess I should call them quills because that's what a porcupine has. And this time I am using E55, E57, and E59. And because those quills are protruding out so much, they would be catching some light. So this time I'm switching my shadows and doing it opposite how I did their bodies. So I'm laying in a nice deep shadow with that E59. And then I'm going to blend that out with the E57 and then I'll use that E55 for the highlight. So the darkest color that I used on their bodies is now going to become the lightest color that I'm going to use on their quills, which I think just really ties the images together nicely. Also, when I colored their bodies, I did them all at once because it was a lot quicker and easier than switching back and forth between markers. But because I'm working with much darker shades now that are a bit harder to blend, I'm just going to do each of these porcupines individually. And that way I can ensure that that paper stays saturated and those colors are flowing together nicely. You can also see that I'm coloring in little circular motions and that is to break up any harsh lines that are left behind from the previous color just so that the blend remains nice and smooth. And then I'm also going to use these same shades for the trunk of my Christmas tree just to tie that all in together. And then I'll give them some rosy cheeks with R01 and R20 and I'll also color the insides of their ears with that R20. That just makes them look a little extra cheerful. And then I'll bring in E47 to color in their noses because I didn't really want to have any black in this scene. Then I'm going to move on to some creamy shades. I'm using E000, E40, and E41. So I'm going to do one of the gifts with this combo. I just wanted it to be a white, but I wanted it to have a little bit of shading. So rather than go with grays, I've really been loving these creamier tones this season. I just think it's something a little bit different. And then I'll hop around and do a few of the other little images, the ornaments for the tree. So I did one of the little balls and then I'm doing some stripes on the other ornaments. I used just the E41 to add some shading to the white parts of all of my candy canes. I like to do that first because it's just really quick and easy to do it all at once. 
And then I also did color in my star white. I thought that might be something different. I ended up changing my mind later on, but at this point I was trying to keep the color palette very simple. So I decided to go with white. And then I'm gonna move on to my reds. I'm using R24, R29, and R39. And again, I'm gonna hop around and do a few of these images. And I didn't like color consistently at this point because my son called me, my oldest son. Um, he had just had to buy a hundred stamps for something he's working on and he was shocked at how much it cost and he was just calling me to confirm that he didn't get scammed or anything. <laughs> and I was like, no, that's actually the price of stamps now. They've gone way up. Um, so yeah, so I was a little bit um, you know, forgetful and I moved on to the ribbon on the gift before I had finished the little ball ornament there. That's because I had to answer the phone and was chatting with him for a minute there. He was afraid that maybe he'd bought a different kind of stamp that was for something else, but no, they were just regular forever stamps with the little flag on them. But anyway, yeah, we can all commiserate, can't we, over the price of postage stamps. Gosh. Anyway, we are going to continue coloring in a few of these accessory images. I wanted there to be quite a few little pops of red because we are going to have some green on here, but there's also going to be the green of the tree. So there'll be quite a bit of green. So I just wanted to balance that out by having enough red on this scene. So I'm going to do the outer parts of one more ornament. And then I'm gonna use just my R29 to fill in the red stripes of my candy canes. And I decided to have to start with red like in the crook of the candy cane. And then the other two I started with white just to kind of mix it up and make it a little bit different. And then I also decided to do one of the gifts with red wrapping paper. And I originally started with the R29, so I just switched to the R39 because I wanted that depth down at the bottom of the gift and also on the bottom of the lid. And then just blend it upward with the R29. And that's gonna give me a nice little highlight at the very top with the R24. So I'm gonna fill in all of that and also the area under that bow. And then the last thing that is going to be red is the tree skirt. So I'm gonna use that R39 and kind of create a deeper shadow there up on the back side of that tree skirt because that tree is really big so it would be casting a nice deep shadow there. And then I will blend out with the R29 and I'm really making sure to scrub over the edge of the darkest shade, the R39, with this mid-tone to just break up, you know, that line so we don't get any harsh little delineation marks, you know, where the colors kind of meet together. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the R24, just making sure to go over the edge of that R29 too to just soften that up and make the colors flow together a little bit better. So for the green of my accessory images, like the gifts and the ornaments, I'm gonna use G14, G16, and G29. This is a green that has a lot of blue tone to it. It's very cool undertones. And so I thought that that would be really pretty. And it's a very traditional green, which is what I wanted for this scene. I wanted to go with a very traditional color palette. And I'm also gonna be bringing in something in just a little bit, which is where I drew my color inspiration from. So we'll get to that uh, shortly. But for now, I am just gonna hop around again and just color in I did the, the ribbon on the red gift. I'm gonna do the outer parts of two of the ornaments, just making sure that one has a white stripe and one has a red stripe so that they're not identical. I did one of the plain ball ornaments as well, and then I'm doing the center stripe on the red ornament on the far right there. And then I decided to do the last gift wrap in this green combo as well. 
This one was a little bit easier to color in because it doesn't have a separate lid, so pretty quick and easy to do. And then I am going to go back to my creamy white combo to finish out my last couple of little objects because I felt like the white was a little bit out of balance. We didn't have quite enough of that. So I did the bow on the green gift and then I'm also gonna do the stool in this combo. So using that E41 first and then blending out with the E40 and then adding in a little of that E triple zero. So as I was looking at those ornament toppers, I realized that I was going to have to bring in another color and it was either going to be silver or gold that I went with. I decided to go with gold. So I used the YR23 to fill all of those in. And then to tie that in somewhere else, I decided to go ahead and do a gold star for the top of the tree. So I used that and then blended out with the YR21 and then used the Y triple zero to finish that off. And because it was so light originally, I could just color right over that and you would never even know that it was a different color to begin with. So for my Christmas tree, I wanted to go with a very different green combo than the green ornaments so that it, they would still stand out against it. So I decided to use YG03, YG05, YG07, and YG09. So this is a more of a yellow toned green, except for the YG09. The YG09 has some cooler tones in it, so I think it does tie in well to the other greens that we used. I am gonna use the YG09 at the very top of each of the sections of the tree, and then I'll blend out with the YG07, and then I'm gonna go down with the YG05, and to be honest, I probably could have stopped with the YG05, but because this was such a large image, I just wanted to have a little bit more dynamics there. So I decided to add in that fourth shade, the YG03, but probably the three shades could have been fine. I wasn't completely happy with how the colors were blending, so I did go back over these shades in the reverse just to kind of smooth out that blend a little bit more and um, added in the darkest shade, that YG09 last, just to darken that up. And then um, I had originally thought maybe I would leave it a little bit streaky with this darkest shade, but it just didn't look quite right. So I decided to go back down and blend those out one more time with the YG07 and then the YG05. And I left the last layer of the YG03 just as it was. And then I'm gonna take a black Sakura Jelly Roll pen and I will go over the eye of just the baby porcupine because he's the only one who has his eye open. And then I will trim all of these images out with their matching dies. Next, I'm going to work on my sentiment. So I am popping a piece of Lawn Fawn Chili Pepper cardstock in my Misty, and that is being held in place using the Waffle Flower Grip Mat. I'm treating that with the Rabbit Hole Designs Powder Tool, and then I'm going to ink up my sentiment using Versamark ink, which is just a clear sticky ink that grips a hold of your embossing powder, so it really works well for that. I am gonna ink that up a couple of times and just press down gently. I don't wanna squish those letters so they become distorted, but I do wanna make sure that they are gonna be nice and legible. So I did stamp that down a couple of times. And then I'm gonna coat that with some Lawn Fawn white embossing powder. And then I will tap off any excess. And then off to the side, I will heat my heat gun up for maybe about a minute. And then I bring it to the cardstock from the back and the front just to minimize any warping until all of that powder is melted and turns bright white and shiny. And then I can set that aside and pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using Lawn Fawn Craft cardstock and I'm going to stamp with Walnut ink. So I'm gonna do the little couple uh, from Porcupine for you. I think they are super cute. 
And then the little kind of glimmer marks are from Joy to All. And then the sentiment is again from Merry Messages. It says, sending warm wishes for a happy holiday season. And I stamped that down twice to make sure I had a good impression and pressed down a little extra in the center to make sure that that ink in the middle was transferring. And then I'm gonna move on to my pattern paper. I'm using one of the sheets from the Knit Picky 6x6, which was last year's Christmas pattern paper pack from Lawn Fawn. And I will also use a piece of the light brown wood grain cardstock, and I'm trimming those down with the second largest of the outside in stitch rectangle stackables. And then I'm going to bring in a panel that I stenciled using the Winter Sprigs background stencils from Lawn Fawn. And I created this background in a recent video when I reviewed the Waffle Flower 6x6 grip mat. I posted that the week before this is going live. So if you're interested in seeing how I created that stenciled background, you can definitely check out that video and also see what my thoughts were on that new tool. So that was trimmed out with the largest of the outside in stitch rectangle stackables, and then I glued it to my card front. I also trimmed down a piece of gold metallic cardstock to be just slightly larger than the pattern paper, just to have a nice little festive pop in the framing of this card. So I'm gluing that pattern paper to the center of that, and then I will glue the wood grain piece down at the bottom. I did switch out the one that I showed you originally for a slightly taller one. And then I am also going to use just a little strip of white cardstock, which is gonna become the baseboard of this scene. So I'm gluing that on the border between the wood grain and the pattern paper. I've added some foam tape to the back of that. So I'll peel off the release papers and then pop that up in the center of the card. I was just making sure that it actually was the bottom that I was, um, that was facing the correct way as I'm adhering this. And then I can bring in my images and my sentiment, which I trimmed down with the largest of the everyday sentiment banners. And I'm gonna glue that down at the bottom of the scene, just above that stitching detail on that wood grain cardstock. When I'm building my scenes, I usually like to start with the largest image first. So that is going to be the Christmas tree. And I wanted that to be more over toward the right hand of the scene. So that's where I'm gonna glue that right up toward the bottom of that baseboard. And then I am gonna go ahead and add the star to the top because I just wanna make sure that it wasn't too high. I didn't mind if it touched the gold of that you know, metallic paper, but I didn't want it to be hanging above that. So, and then I'm gonna add in the little stool from Mary Mice and I wanted to tip it at a bit of an angle. Then I'm gonna take this larger porcupine, which is gonna be the daddy in my scene, and I'm going to put him so it looks like he's standing on one foot and leaning over to put one of the ornaments on the tree. So I'm just gonna take that red ball and tuck it under his hand while that glue is still wet. Then I'll take the other big porcupine, which is gonna be the mama in my little scene here. I'm gonna place her over toward the bottom right of the scene, just above that sentiment strip. And then I'll have the baby just sitting right in front of her, right along that sentiment strip as well. And then I'm going to arrange my gifts over on the left-hand side, starting with the square red gift, and then I'll do the circular white gift, put that a little bit more toward the right-hand side, and then the little green one is going to go down in front on the far left as well to kind of balance out the mom and baby porcupine. Then I'm going to start decorating my tree with my ornaments and candy canes. And I just wanted to spread them out a bit and make sure that two of the same color weren't right up next to each other or two of the same shape. So I'm kind of, you know, picking and choosing different ones to put here and there. I even tucked one back behind the mama porcupine to make the tree look nice and full. And as I was doing that, I kind of knocked the green one on top off kilter, but I will realize that in a second and fix it before that glue dries. 
And then in the center of the middle tier, I'll add another candy cane. And then I'm just kind of choosing a few more for the bottom tier. I wanted to start with another green one since we started with a red one on the tier above. And then I'll put another candy cane in the center. And then I have a few extra little ornaments. So I decided to put these down on the floor as if maybe the mom and baby are kind of handing the ornaments to the dad so that he can hang them on the tree. And so I kind of arranged those in a little grouping down near the gifts. And then I added the last red ornament into the mama's hands. So I just kind of slipped that back behind the baby and then fixed the baby so he would be overlapping once again. And then I had one more candy cane, so I decided to tuck that on the far left next to the small green gift. And then the more I looked at it, the more I kept thinking that the top left corner looked empty. So I decided to take this little picture frame from Den Sweet Den. I thought, porcupines live in dens too, don't they? I'm pretty sure they do. So I decided to add that. It was really the perfect size to fit that empty space, so I just tucked that back behind the dad porcupine's quills. And I really like how that looks there. I think that finished things off really nicely. So all that was left was to add a little bit of sparkle. So I'm taking some stardust stickles and adding it to my star topper and to all of my ornaments. For the ones with the stripe, I just added it to the center stripe. And then for the ball ornaments, I just added it toward the bottom. I also added it to the candy canes and all of the ribbons on the gifts. And that is going to finish this one off. So I will lift that up to the screen so you can see all of the sparkle and the shine from that metallic gold cardstock. And I'll give you another peek at the inside as well. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one and hopefully it gave you some inspiration to how to take a stamp set that is intended for one holiday and maybe use it for something completely different like Valentine's to Christmas. If you did like it, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell if you want to be alerted whenever I post a new video. All of the products I use will be listed and linked down below in the description bar. And I will also put up day 17 from the previous two years of holiday card series in case you'd like to keep watching. Thanks so much for spending your time with me. I hope you had a good one. Bye-bye.